Hunters Lane High School this week for Social Dweeb's presentation of Springfield High School football. And tonight, it'll be Springfield Yellow Jackets versus Hunters Lane in its own Hunters Lane's homecoming. And T, it has been raining most of the afternoon, and the field is wet, but it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Yeah, it's uh, definitely soaked up at rain, Coach. And uh, like you said, tonight the Jackets will be at Hunters Lane uh, for homecoming. Uh, you know, speaking of last Friday night for the Jackets, the Jackets welcomed the Hennessyville Commandos to the Nest for a re- big region 7 5 8 showdown. Uh, the Jackets started hot. On the first play from scrimmage, sophomore running back Lamarius Dowling got the uh, Southside Drugs touchdown on a beautiful 49 yard scamper down the middle. The Jackets defense forced a few three and outs Friday night and defended the run very well. Offensively, the Jackets turned the ball over five times, and those turnovers turned out to be the nail in the Jackets' coffin. The Jackets lost the matchup versus Hendersonville 21-7 and fell to 3-4 in the season and 1-2 and in region play. Uh, no matter the talent level you have, Coach, you can't expect to turn the ball over that many times and win. No, anytime you turn the ball over three times, much less five, you're probably going to lose the football yes, sir. game. And tonight, how much of a factor do you think the weather is going to be? You know, it's starting to slow down a little bit here rain-wise, but I think the Jackets going to try to do what they do, Coach, and run the football. I mean, you know what you got here tonight. Uh, tonight you in – uh, tonight, the Jackets travel to Nashville, Tennessee to face the Hunters Lane Warriors. Uh, Hunters Lane comes into the matchup uh, not getting a win since week one. Um, Hunters Lane has always been an athletic team that will be fired up to play here tonight at home on homecoming. Uh, but, you know, what, what, what do you think the key will be tonight for the Jackets, you know, coming in here and getting a win, Coach? I really think it will be eliminating penalties, eliminating turnovers, and stopping the run. Yep. And, you know, Hunters Lane likes to try to throw it deep, but – I think I know you know they still might try to do it tonight, Coach. But the way this weather is, I, I don't know if you know throwing the ball might be still in the wheelhouse. I might try to run it tonight. But uh, if you're the Jackets defensively up front and with linebacker play, you've been dominating all season. I don't see why nothing will be different tonight. Yeah, um, playing a well, we might as well say it an inferior opponent. If you stop the run and make them throw the football, it may go in in favor of the Yellow Jackets. Yes, sir. And uh, I think you know for the Jackets, you know, like you said. Try, the Jackets, you get the ball, run it, run it, run it. Ain't no reason to put the ball in the air. It's rainy, it's sloppy. We have problems, you know, trying to throw dry balls, Coach. So <laughs> yeah. a, a well one ain't going to be, you know, in our favor tonight. Just run that ball and make Hunter's Lane stop it. Make him stack the box and stop it. And then that's where you can try to pop one over the top to Cobbins because he can burn anybody, Coach. And we, like you always say, we have got to find ways to get Cobb into football. As always, Coach, three keys to the game. Number one key would be jump on them early. Uh, you got to get them early. It don't matter if they're homecoming or not, Coach. You got to, they're going to be fired up. So when you come out early, jump on them. Go on and kill their confidence early for them, Coach. And secondly, be uh, forced into obvious passing situations. I know they like to pass the ball, but nobody likes to pass the ball when the other team knows you're passing the ball. Yeah. Uh, our defensive line should be able to pressure the quarterback tonight you know, all night long because we have had a couple of games where we have been in their backfield most any time we could, you know, they snap the football. Yes, sir. And, uh, of course, third key <laughs> every week, get the ball in 24's hands any yes. way possible. End of rounds, like I said, it's wet tonight. End of rounds, uh, middle screens, anything you can get the ball in his hands, get it in his hands. Just get him in space and let him work. Yes, sir. And it has lightened up raining here. I looked at the weather a while ago, and there's still a big blob coming in, but maybe we can get most of this in before it gets here. Hopefully, hopefully so. Uh, and tonight, you know, I talked to Coach Wilson on Locker Room Talk last uh, last night, actually. You know, getting pushed up to Thursday night, Locker Room Talks every Wednesday. Uh, and I talked to Coach, like, what's the difference, you know, getting ready for a Thursday night game instead of a Friday night? He said, T, it's been different. You know, Monday we would usually do getting ready for the other team. We did that same, but Tuesday, you know, you usually it's your worst day. You, Tuesday's usually sloppy, trying to put, you know, install new stuff, and nothing changed. This week he said it was sloppy as ever on Tuesday, but he had to turn around Wednesday instead of getting another practice edit. You got to walk through, Coach. Yeah. Anytime you get thrown out of your routine, it, it makes a difference. Yes, sir. And uh, the Jackets coming here tonight, as I said, after that tough loss last week, trying to lick their wounds and get a win here at Hunters Lane tonight on homecoming. Uh, tonight the Jackets travel to Hunters Lane, last uh, road trip, and so hopefully November for the Jackets coach in the first round of playoffs. This is the last road game. We'll be at home in the next two weeks against Gallatin and Beach. Yeah, and T, you want to go into fall break on a high note. You don't want to go into it with a loss and sit there and think about it for two weeks. Fall break and you got a, a 
bye week, Coach. So you would love to enjoy your bye week and take it off with a win. Yeah. And tonight, the Yellow Jackets in their black pants, white uniform, I mean, white jerseys, white helmets, and Hunter's Lane in all blue, T. At all royal blue. That's nice right there, Coach. Remind so, me of TSU a little that's bit. What I with a little like, orange in it. That's what it sort is. Sort of looks like your old uniform. And the Jackets, the captains for the Jackets is always um, number 55. Max Baldwin, number six, 56, Matt Gregory, and number 23, whoop, 24, Clarence Cobbins. And to you, tonight may be one of the few nights that the Yellow Jacks actually have a size advantage over the opposing team. Yeah, they, 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 we're bigger up front than uh, Hunter's Lane is, and I think with our couple of skilled guys, we're bigger too, Coach. This is, de- definitely got to take advantage of the run game early and try to stop their offense. And if we got anybody coming back off the injured list this week, I know last week we got Jabrell Ellis back, but this week I see him sitting on the sideline, Coach. So I guess it's one of those games where, you know, Coach, I'm going to pull a couple guys who may have a little tweaky injury out, especially the skill guys. We know what we're going to try to do tonight, Coach. We've got to run the ball. Oh, yeah. Just pound the rock and avoid mistakes. Yes, sir. Last time the Jackets was here at Hunter's Lane was 2005. The Jackets got a victory over the Hunter's Lane Warriors. And Springfield has won the toss and deferred to the second half, so they'll get the football to start the second half. And, T, it's a pretty good decision. Put Hunter's Lane on offense first. Yes, sir, definitely in a sloppy field knowing they want to throw the ball around. Give it to them first, Coach, and uh, let them do what they want to with it. And, you know, as the game goes on, it's been raining all day. This field's a good sloppy and sloppy. It's been stayed up so well in, in uh, warm-ups. It looks beautiful. They've done a good job keeping up this field. But as the day goes on, it's going to get sloppy and sloppier. Yes, it is, because it's, it's still misting. And like you said, the more you wear on it, the muddier it's going to get. Yes, sir. So we're about 42 seconds away from kickoff. And, T, let me get your prediction for tonight. Jack has come out this first drive, literally, Coach, is stuff them. Uh, get the ball to your offense, run that ball, and run it and make them stop it. Run it till they like it, Coach. And I say run it all night until the dogs come home. That's right. Just keep pounding and pounding and wear them down. Here come the Jackets. And T, tonight we've just got five officials. i seen that, Coach, and no band for the Jackets. So yeah. the Jackets will try to create their own little uh, mojo tonight and make it feel like a Friday night football game. And it's a very sparse crowd for the home team and the visitors. Yes, sir. You know, there's been rainy conditions all day long. And going to turn cool starting, I think, late Friday night into Saturday. Supposed to drop down into the 40s, T. I ain't, I'm ready for it, Coach. Yeah. It's about time. You know, it's October. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, that, like I said, the Jackets played, last played here at Hunter's Lane in 2005 with a victory under head coach John Offit. And the last time the Hunter's Lane Warriors and the Jackets met was the following year in 2006 at Boy Smith Field, Coach, where the Jackets won on homecoming. The Jackets are 2-0 and against the Warriors in history. I knew they hadn't played a whole lot, but I didn't realize they'd played twice. Yes, sir, 05 and 06, back-to-back years. I was at that game here, actually, in 05, where the Jackets' defense just had a night. And it's a relatively easy trip to get here and not very far to go. No, sir, not at all. So we got Sanganez on to kick away. And, T, he's been popping the ball up most of the season and I think that's what you're going to see here. Yes, sir. And he approaches the football and he does pop it up in the air and he kicks it out of bounds and I would imagine they'll take it right where it went out of bounds since it's past the 35-yard line. And as always, they got great sponsors, Southside Drugs, Freebird Bell Bonds, Omni Garage Door, Forklift Systems, Holman Jewelers, Baldwin's Barbecue, Jody Reynolds with Legacy Signature, Sunshine Cleaning Company, Crowder Funeral Home, Allen Holman with Century 21, Rawls Paving, Wilkins Building Group, Vision Concepts, Westside Wheels and Tires, Jeff Wright with Remax, Dunbar Lawn Care, Bulldog Renovations, and BS Brewworks. And Springfield ready to go on defense. The 
And T, we're pretty much seeing the same thing we saw last week. Yes, that, sir. That shotgun. Quarterback takes the snap, looking to throw, and throws it into the ground in front of his receiver. And as we said, Coach, they want to come out and try to throw the ball. Exactly what they're going to do. That time, he just threw it about five yards short of his intended receiver. They're trying to throw the ball regardless of the uh, weather conditions. That may play into Springfield's hand. Yes, sir. Especially if you're going to throw it to the side they just tried to with Cobbins over there. And as always, you know, a wet field. Oh. And runs a sweep, and he's going to be nailed in the backfield by number 16. Number 16 for the Jack is Jack Holt. And he's been playing lights out for the last couple of games. Yes, he has. So that's going to make it third down at about 15 to go. And T, what is the Hunter's Lane mascot? The Warriors, Coach. The Warriors. So it's third down 15 for the Warriors. Quarterback in the backfield by himself. And that's an obvious passing down, Coach. Exactly where you want to put him in. And we got a penalty, and it's a illegal procedure against Hunter's Lane. So it's going to set them back again. So now it's going to be third down at about 20. It's when you pin your ears back as a pass rusher coach and go get them. This is Duru time. Yes, sir. I see Max Ball on top of the screen with a. A real small guy on him, Coach. Quarterback just going to take it and tuck it and run it. And going to step out of bounds way short of his first down. Possibly could have been a hole call there, T. But yeah, they, it was on Jack Holt on that corner. Yes. He had him almost turned. So Hunter's Lane going to punt it away here. Going back. To receive the kick, Cobbins at single safety. I watch where I kick this ball if I was on his <laughs> yes. lane. And that wet field is going to affect the snap and the kick. And I see all the skill guys, no gloves tonight, coach. And they're going to kick it. A, tried to kick it away from Cobbins, but it went to him. He's got a little running room, takes it back to the 50 yard line where Springfield will take it over first and 10 for their first possession of the game. He got Hurst coming in at tailback. Nice to have that young man back because he sure brings speed to the game. Yeah, he does. Uh, was played with that at ankle for a little bit, uh, but he's back now. We Hopefully he's back full speed, Coach. Bet sets him down, puts Cobbins in motion, going to hand to Cobbins first thing, and Hunter's Lane able to string it out. He may have picked up a yard. As you can tell, we are sitting pretty close to the Hunter's Lane band. We're on top of them, Coach. (laughs) Yeah. I like it. I like it. I like it. It's not many of them either. No, it's not, but they're loud. It's about 20 of them, if if that. It's literally about 20 of them. They sound good. Going to be second down and nine for Springfield. Hurst in the backfield behind Betts. Got a hand to Hurst up the middle. Got running room. Kicks it to the outside. Almost had the football stripped from him, but he's going to get down close to his first down. Going to bring up third down and about two. And he's so far exactly what you said. They were going to run the football till they stop it. Any way possible. As, as I said, pregame, in the rounds, the Cobbins, straight downhill, dives in your face. Even get Parker Besson on some quarterback runs. Run the football. So it's third and two from about the 44-yard line. Hunter's Lane showing blitz. Betts takes it himself, and I'm not sure if he got it or not. He didn't get there. Going to be a little short. And this decision time here. 
Going to be fourth and a little over a yard from about the 42-yard line of Hunter's Lane. And Springfield going to roll the dice and go for it. And we got all kinds of motion all over the field. The ball is never a snap because we're going backwards. Yes, we are. And I think that that will bring the punter on the field. And that's one of the things we talked about. We have got to eliminate those type of penalties. Yes, sir. You can't put yourself in bad situations. You want to put the opponent in it, but you can't do it to yourself. And they're still going for it, though. Yeah, they're still going for it. Going to be fourth down and about five, six yards to go. Betts taking a hard count, trying to draw him off sides. Now he's getting a play in from the sideline. Got a hand to Hurst. Hurst hit in the backfield and dropped for a loss. So the ball will go over to the Warriors on downs. And see, those penalties are very, very costly. Key every time, Coach, because Hurst got a yard and a half, two yards. That's yeah, exactly easily. what you needed. That's what you needed them before you got the false start. Uh, the Jack is now giving Hunters Lane the ball right back where they had it at, Coach. And Hunters Lane got receivers all over the field trying to spread the Yellow Jackets out. 8.30 in the first quarter, no score. Hunters Lane running a man on late. under a lot of pressure, rolling to his right and throws it out of bounds. So it's gonna bring up second down and we got a referee that just got nailed on the sideline. He planted him, coach. And he is shook up. I'm not sure whether he hit his head on the ground or not, but it sure looked like it. (laughs) Hunter's lane player ran right through him, coach. Yeah. He's he back didn't up. stop. <laughs> he's back up shaking his head, so I guess he's okay. I wonder if he would have ran through one of his own players like that. <laughs> that may be the best tackle of the night. Too. It is, so far. So far, he's the Omni Garage door player of the game right there, Coach. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be second down and 10. Hunter's Lane with trip receivers to the bottom of your screen, single receiver to the top. Second down, 10. Quarterback under pressure, going to be hit and dropped by number 56. I think that's Gregory. Yes, sir. And he fumbled, but he got back on the football. So he's going to lose about 10 yards. The 6'1", 230-pound senior, Matt Gregory, come from a deep tackle spot and got that sack. Brings us a long third down, Coach. What a play there by Matt. Yeah, he came through relatively unblocked. And that's what Hunters Lane want to do. They want to throw the ball, Coach. You got to pressure him. Yeah. And I was wrong. Jabrell Ellis is in the game. He's a safety now. Quarterback dropping back. Going to throw it out in the flats. Running back going to be hit and dropped about five yards short of his first down marker. So it's going to bring up fourth down. And now Hunters Lane got the decision to make. In fact, it's about four yards short. And Hunter's Lane, nothing to lose here. So they're going to go for it. Springfield have to be disciplined and not jump off sides here. Quarterback takes the snap, rolls out, under pressure. Going to flip it out for a first down. Going to be tackled behind by Duru Smith. <coughs> and we got a flag coming in after the play was over. T, did Duru get hold of the face mask? Or? No, he swiped down at the ball. Referees talking it over, and they're going to move it back. 
So the flag was on Hunter's Lane. And T, they are right at the first down marker. Yeah, they are. Got a block in the back. So it's going to be fourth down and less than a yard. They'll give him the first. They're going to give it to him, yes. Hunter's Lane football at the 45-yard line of Springfield. Cobbins showing blitz. A quarterback running for his life and going to be tracked down and dropped there by number 16 for Springfield. That's Jack Holt again. And... He may have gained a yard, well, three yards. Didn't look like he picked up that much. No, he didn't. And look at here, Coach, the rain has finally stopped. Yes, it has. Going to be second down and about seven from the 42-yard line of Springfield. Quarterback in the empty backfield. Put a man in motion across the set. Quarterback going to try to run, and he's hit in the backfield, breaks a tackle, but he has run out of bounds all the way up on the track, and he is going to lose yardage. T, that play was done from the start. Somebody should move that sludge hammer on the sideline. Yes. (laughs) He ran right into that thing. He was hit hard enough without that. So it's going to be third down and 11. Ball at about the 46-yard line. Springfield showing blitz again. Quarterback. Hands off and got running the flag comes in. He's gonna score, Coach. Yes, he's gonna score, but I'm pretty sure that we got a hold against Hunter's Lane. He takes it to the end zone off the jet sweep. I think number 77 knows what's fixing to take place, and it does. So it's gonna be brought back by the penalty. So T will avoid. Getting behind early. Going to bring up a long third down in about 20. If you're the Jackets, you got to get off the field right now, Coach. Yes, you do. You can't give up any points. Third down and 20 to go for the Warriors. Quarterback dropped back looking to throw. Flushed out of the pocket, rolling to his right. And he is going to be hit and dropped by number 51 for the Yellow Jackets. Number 51 for the Jackets, the junior, Joshua Lee. So that's going to bring up fourth down and about 12 from the 47-yard line. And tell you they're going to go for it again. Well, I think they might be punting this one, Coach. Yeah, they brought in the kicker. I would love to see Cobbins get an alley this time on this one. Snaps good. Setting up the return. It's an end-over-end kick. Going to hit in front of Cobbins and bounce out of bounds. So Springfield will take over at about their own 22-yard line. And Hunter Zane hit on that ball. For most, most of the first quarter, Coach, you got 431 left in the first. Yeah, they ate up about eight minutes. If you're the Jackets, you want to get this you want to get this ball and get it taken downfield and get in the end zone. Yeah, you don't want to give a team like this any hope. No, sir. Forget you, the end zone. Actually, you need to get a first down, Coach. <laughs> we always talked about stepping on somebody's throat early and getting them out of the game. That's what Springfield needs to do tonight. Hurst in the backfield, trip receivers to the right. 
Got a hand to hers. It's going to be hit immediately and going to lose two yards back to the 20-yard line. I think he's going to punch a hole in that drum. <laughs> I love it, Coach. I <laughs> yeah. love it. Get my juices flowing a little bit up here. Going to be second down at about 12 from the 20. Betts puts Cobbins in motion. Got a hand to Hurst up the middle and nothing doing. He is fortunate to get back to the 20-yard line. The Jackets got to come off the ball, Coach. These old linemen have to come off the ball and reestablish the line of scrimmage. Right now, we're getting beat off the football something bad. We got to get off the ball and reestablish the line of scrimmage right now. It's going to be third down and 12 from the 20-yard line. Betts going to roll to the right, looking to throw. Got some running room. Going to be hit and dropped about a two-yard gain. So it's going to bring up fourth down and about nine. And, T, we're just not knocking them off the football at all. Not at all, all, Coach. Not at all. We are losing the game at the line of scrimmage right now. Got number 19 coming on to punt for the Yellow Jackets. Number 19 for the Jackets, the 6'1 sophomore, Keith O'Neill. Did a great job last week and hits a high end-over-end kick. Going to take and die right at the 40-yard line of Hunter's Lane. And they'll take it over right there. 238 in the first quarter, 0-0. And T, this first quarter has flown by. Yeah, it has. And Hunters Lane, you know, they came out originally trying to throw the ball like they always do. And they hit one right here quick on the sideline early, and Duru chased it down. But since then, they was like, okay, we need to just try to QB run it to the ends. And they've had success with it, Coach, and actually scored once, but it got called back by a holding. So if you're the Jackets right now, up front, both sides of the ball, you gotta you got to take over this game. Yeah, their defensive line – has pretty much dominated our offense. Going to put a man in motion. Going to throw it out to the motion man. Got a little room to the sideline. Takes it out to about the 44-yard line. Our defensive line been able to get to the quarterback that just can't get him down. Yes, sir, they have. We got a timeout, Springfield, with 2.27 in the first quarter, tied 0-0 with Hunter's Lane. here where Hunter's Lane has it second down and about tw- uh, eight and they're able to pick up maybe two, three yards on the play. So it's going to be third down and about we'll say three. Hunter's Lane just trying to toss it around. Nothing deep, just hitting the quick pass. Getting in the athlete's hands. Cobbins on the blitz. Quarterback sets up, and it's going to be picked off. 
And T is number 40, Reynolds, on the interception. And he takes it back down inside the 40-yard line of Hunter's Lane. Great play there. Beautiful, beautiful play by the junior, Hayden Reynolds. And that was created by the defensive line being all up in the grill. Yes, sir. Of the passer. He was rotating left, just threw it up, trying to get that first down. Hayden Reynolds, Johnny on the spot, and got that free bird, Bell Bonds turnover. Great job. And now we need to do something with it. Betts ready for the snap. Going to hand to Hurst. Hurst making positive yardage down to about the 31-yard line. Going to be second down at about six. T, that may have been the spark we needed to wake ourselves up. Yes, sir. Springfield with trip receivers to the right. Second down, six. Hurst going to be hit in the backfield and dropped for a loss by Hunter's Lane. And he's going to be dropped for about a three-yard loss. Going to make it third down and about eight. A few teams the Jackets have played this year, defensive line-wise, play like a catch kind of technique where they kind of just sit there and catch the line and they read, you know. But these linemen right here, they're coming off the ball, and the linebackers are blitzing, and the Jackets got to come off the ball themselves and, and pick this stuff up and try to go forward instead of just style-mating this line of scrimmage. Betts looking to throw, and he throws it far short of his intended receiver. I think that was the other Cobbins that time was the intended receiver, and he skips it in front of him for an incomplete pass. 27 seconds left in the first quarter, no score. And it's fourth down and eight for Springfield at the 34-yard line of the Warriors. And we got a penalty flag thrown on the near side of the field. And it's against Springfield again, T. So that's two fourth downs we've tried to go for, and we hadn't been able to either either time. Self-inflicted wounds, Coach. So now it's fourth down at about 13, and we have the punter in the game. Neal ready for the snap. High snap over the head of Neal all the way back to the 30-yard line. He's scrambling, and he is going to be hit and dropped at about the 33-yard line of Springfield, and there was no way the Neal could get to that. And I thought he was just trying to kick it out of that coach. He yeah. tried to get the corner, and Hunter's Lane set up in beautiful field position. Yes. I thought maybe he might try to stop and kick it, but uh, it, I don't guess it ever occurred to him. Hunter's Lane first and 10 from Springfield's 30, well, we'll say the 33-yard line. 18 seconds in the first quarter, no score. Springfield making a substitution, bringing Max Baldwin into the game. Hunters Lane starting to get a bit of confidence over here. Yes, they are. And that's a bad thing when you're playing a team like this. Referee's ready to start the clock. Quarterback dropping to throw. Going to throw it out in the flat. It's going to be over the head of the run in 10. We have a group of kids right below us, Coach, with their phones out. My Wi-Fi is starting to lag. <laughs> you have to throw something at him, too. <laughs> Second down and 10 from the 33-yard line. Springfield showing blitz. Hunter's Lane quarterback going to tuck it and run it. And he's going to be bottled up there and brought down by Duru Smith and number 41, Philippe. Yes, sir. 
Going to bring up third down at the end of the first quarter. It's Springfield zero, Hunters Lane zero. We're back here at Hunter's Lane where it's going to be fourth down and 10 for the Warriors at their Springfield 34-yard line. Hunter's Lane with twin receivers to one side, trip receivers to the other. Here comes the blitz. And Cobbins able to get a hand on the football and bat it down, so we were able to dodge a bullet there, T. And Navi the Jackets, you, you have to get something going on offense, Coach. I, I, I suggest another end around to Cobbins to the wide side of the field and let him just get something going for this Jackets offense. Either that or go to that Wildcat again. Yes, sir. That was very effective last week. It was very successful. Springfield going to have it first and 10 from their own 34-yard line. 11.50 in the half. Betts hands to Hurst. Hurst runs over a man, takes it out to about the 39-yard line. We got a change of a back, Coach. Number 12's in for the Jackets now toting that ball. The 5'11 freshman, Cameron Wilson. Well, he lowered his head that time and just run over somebody. Yeah, he did. We talked about Cameron Wilson at the end of, I believe, what game was that, Coach? Was it Clarksville? Uh, wasn't it the game before the last? Centennial. Yes. Yes, the end of that Centennial game he got in. We talked about how hard he ran that football. Going to hand it to him again. Picking up yardage. Going to have a whole Jewelers first down. And he's coming off the bench and running the football. Cameron Wilson, the freshman. Coming in, giving the Jackets a the spark they need, Coach. And we got an official's timeout. Don't know why, but we do. And the Jackets using to go to the sideline. Yeah. Official blowing the whistle, getting them back on the field. Going to be first and 10 from the 48-yard line of Springfield. Springfield in the shotgun formation. Bet, <coughs> excuse me, Bet's going to keep it himself, and he's going to pick up about six yards on the run. That time just followed the up back and the tailback, able to pick up about six, seven yards. 
Yellow Jackets have the football second down and about four from the 45 yard line of Hunter's Lane. High snap and let's see what we've got. We've got a timeout Springfield. So T, so far, neither team able to establish a whole lot. No sir, and both teams you know, doing a very little punt. Jack has only punted the ball twice. Hunter's Lane has went forward every time on fourth down, which has been about five times. <laughs> yes. No hesitation at all doing it. I think they punted twice, the Cobbins, too. So both teams have punted twice. But for the most part, this game has been played from 30 to 30, Coach. <laughs> Nobody's gotten the red zone yet. And Springfield with one turnover. Hunter's Lane with one turnover. Yes, sir. And both teams having a rash of penalties early. So whichever team can get it cleaned up the quickest may win this football game. And as I said, you can see they're playing so much between the 30 and 30 that it's starting to get beat up inside the numbers. So, you know, as the game goes on, it's only going to get worse, Coach. It's going to get sloppy before the night's over. Betts rolling to his right, looking, looking. Throws it downfield, in and out of the hands of Cobbins at the 30-yard line. Going to bring up third down at about four from the 45. See, that ball was just thrown just a hair behind him. If we could have laid it out in front of him, Coach, he, he would have scored that touchdown. Yes, he would have. As it was, he did a good job trying to get turned to catch it. Yeah, he did. But as we say, this surface. You can't do all that acrobatic <laughs> no. stuff tonight like he did in Portland, Coach. Third down and four. Going to hand, and he's going to be hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped immediately. No gain. Going to be third. I mean, going to be fourth down and four. No side of a punter coming in. and counting in the half. It's tied 0-0. Hunter's Lane showing blitz, and here they come. Picked up. Betts going to run for it, but we got a flag thrown on the far side of the field, and I think this one's coming back. It's going to be holding. That's the third time we went for a fourth down and had a penalty negated. This sloppy football for the Jackets here in this first half. It sure huh? is. It's not characteristic of a Springfield football team. But sometimes you play down to the level of your opponent. And that's what we talked about pregame not doing, Coach. Yeah. We talked about pregame of you having a bye week next week, fall break. You know, you get to sit back and relax a little bit, watch other people play football. But you want to make sure you wrote, you wrote your wrongs from last week tonight. And so far in the first half, the Jackets haven't done that. Neal in to kick it away. 9.42 and counting in the half. Snap much better this time. Neal going to kick it Ooh, away. A beauty. Gets into one. Drives him back to about the 18-yard line. He's going to cut it across the field, going to be tackled about the 26. Number six on the tackle for the Jack is the junior, Timothy Bush. Neal, been a pleasant surprise here late in the year kicking the football. Keith O'Neill, the sophomore, 6'1", 155 pounds, coach, has been kicking bombs. Got a big foot. Sanguinez have been doing a great job, you know, place kicking. And here comes O'Neill coming in and, and booting these punts. Hunter's Lane with twin receivers to the left, single receiver to the right. And T, they're rotating in and out their quarterback. Yes, sir, they are. Springfield showing blitz. They drop out of it. And running back going to be hit for a little if no gain. Philippe was the first one there. So it's going to bring up 
Second down and 10. Neither team got anything going that they can hang their hat on so far. No, they don't. Both sides of the ball just, it's been, it's been a sloppy first half here, Coach. Kind of lackadaisical on both their parts. Quarterback in the backfield by himself. Going to run it. Going to run the draw. Got some running room. Quarterback got one man to beat, and he's brought down there by Timothy Bush. And he saved the touchdown because he was the last man between him and the goal line. And he has speed. Yes, and look what they're going to do, Coach. They're going to switch up and put 88 at quarterback, the same one who ran a touchdown earlier, and he got called back. They're going to run the same play. High snap, and they're – have penalty flags coming in and illegal procedure against Hunter's Lane. Everybody didn't get set that time. They was about to run the same play with, with a speedier guy, Coach. <laughs> yeah, they, they were trying to play up-tempo, and it cost them. So the ball going to be moved back five yards, going to be first down and 15 from about the 44-yard line of Hunter's Lane. 8.07 left in the half, no score. Quarterback takes the snap, and he's just looking to run again. And like you said, T, he can run. And he's going to be hit there by number 28 for Springfield and going to be stopped after a short game. And we got a penalty flag on the field. Number 28 for the Jackets, the 6'2", 180-pound junior, Jabraylon Ellis. And we got a flag on the far sideline. That's holding, Coach. Every time they get on the perimeter, every time they get to the perimeter, it's holding. If I was that coach, I would just not go away from that straight quarterback dive straight down here. Only yes. thing I would change different is I'll put a fullback in front of him. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to move them back even further. Now it's going to be first down and about, ooh, what is that to you, about 25? Every bit of it. Well, first and 25, seven minutes, 41 seconds on the clock. Now they've got their passing quarterback in, and he's able to hit his receiver up past the 50-yard line to about the 48. We got half of it back then, over over yeah. half of it back yes, then. Yes, they Coach. did. Going to be second down and about seven. And they're in a hurry. Trying to play up-tempo here. Quarterback looking to throw. Going to throw deep down the sideline, and it's going to be caught by Cobbins. Woo! What a pick. Knocked it, it in the air and then <laughs> caught it. That was beautiful. Clarence Cobbins with a with another second for the night. Not a second pick for him. Second uh, Freebird Bell Bonds turnover for the Jackets. First by Hayden Reynolds. Second by Clarence Cobbins. Great concentration there to keep his eyes on the football and able to pick it off off the tip. If you're the Jackets, you got to go, Coach. Have to. Seven minutes exactly left in the half. No score. Betts looking to set up the screen, and it is wide open, and he takes it for a Holman Jewelers first down. Coach, he had three blockers, one defender, and they missed him. <laughs> yeah. That was a touchdown. One of those Ole blocks. But it is a Holman Jewelers first down, 6.39 to go. Springfield with the football. On about the 29-yard line, first and 10. Betts rolling to his right. Got Cobbins open in the flat, makes a man miss. Going to pick up down to about the 38, 39-yard line. And now the Jack is in a bit of a hurry offensively here, Coach. Showing a little life here. 
six minutes left in the half. Going to be second down at about two. Ball on the 38-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. Hunter's Lane showing blitz. High snap. And Betts able to pick it out of the air and run it up the middle for a big gain down to about the 44-yard line of Hunter's Lane. Another Holman Jewelers first down. Great play that time by Taylor Betts. Parker Betts literally, I, th- I think it may be a, going to uh, Jaden Hurst that time. Snap was a little high. He just kept it, Coach. And he hit it right on the head. First down, Jackie. You always taught if you miss the man, head to the hole. Yes, sir. And that's exactly what he did. Betts with two running backs in the backfield. Put Cobbins in motion. Swing it out and nowhere near his receiver. Trying to hit Cobbins coming out of the backfield and led him by about five yards. So it's going to bring up second down 10 from the 45 of Hunter's Lane. Yellow Jackets back to the line of scrimmage, 457 and a half. High snap again, hand to Hurst, and he's going to be hit and dropped, and we got a flag on the far sideline. Have to be lining up in a neutral zone defensively. It have to be. We got a sideline warning against Springfield. Fortunately, there's no penalty that goes with that on the first time. Coach Wilson's now in his ear. <laughs> I don't think he likes that call a whole no, lot. not at all. Going to be second down and 10. Springfield got trip receivers to the top. Cobbins down at the bottom, Little Cobbins, single receiver. Bet's going to hand to Hurst. Hurst gets it out to the 40-yard line. Nice carry that time. And, T, do you see the big mismatch I see down at the bottom of the screen? Yes, sir. Number 82, the junior, Cameron Cobbins, standing six foot, 150 pounds. He is head and shoulders taller the than the guy that in man. front of him, coach, may be maybe 5'4. Huge mismatch. No safety over top. No. High snap again. Handoff, and that time the running back slipped. It's, First it's, went to plant his foot, and it just flew out from under him. It's still starting to get sloppy and sloppy, coach. You got to run straight down here. No stutter step when you get that ball. You got to hit them holes. To able to get good footing, you need to get it inside either of the 20s because we hadn't been there. Going to be fourth down again in about five. I tell you, we do not need another penalty here. No saying the Jackets desperately need this first down right here, Coach. And they've still got that mismatch to the bottom of the screen. Going to hand to Cobbins on the jet sweep. Got some room, and he's going to get his first down. Holman Jewelers first down, and T is he in the red zone? Not yet, Coach. Not yet. He's close. He's close. All that uneaten field is the red zone, Coach. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty green grass up in that area. Yeah, you can tell where they've been and where they had. <laughs> first and ten from about the thirty-two yard line of Hunter's Lane. left in the half. No score. Betts going to roll to his right, looking to throw. Nobody there. Breaks a tackle. Takes it down inside the 20 for another Holman Jewelers first down and a forklift system red zone. Yes, sir. For the first time tonight, the Jack is in the red zone. 2.38. Clock moving. T 
See, we need to take advantage of this while we have a chance. Yes, sir. Got twin receivers to each side of the field. High snap. And he takes it up the middle for a touchdown. And T, that's our freshman, number 12. Yes, sir. Freshman, 5'11", Cameron Wilson in the end zone for the south side drugs touchdown to get the jacket started here, Coach. And he made that look easy. Yeah, he did. And he said he was toting that thing. Look like Tiki Barber with it high, high and tight. <laughs> Had it up under his chin. 2-11, Springfield breaks on top, 6-0. Sanganez on to kick the extra point. Snaps good. Kick is up. And the kick is no good. So with 2-11 in the half, Springfield breaks ahead 6 to nothing. Sanganez is going to pooch kick it. Going to be fumbled oh, around. Jack is ball. Maybe Jack is ball. And Springfield, I think, has come up with it. And they have 208 in the half. And Springfield gets the football back after marching down the field and scoring. So Springfield with an opportunity here to go into the locker room with a two score lead if they can punch us in. And they get the ball starting the second half, coach. Now the Jack is cooking with hot grease. You got you to you take advantage of it. Got trip receivers on the right. Bush single receiver on the left. Bats in the shotgun. High snap. Going to hand to her three. And T, he's one step of taking it to the house. Betts ready for the snap. Minute 32 left in the half. High snap again. Hand to Hurst. Hurst moves it forward for another Holman Jewelers first down. Going to put the ball down at about the 31-yard line of Hunter's Lane. A minute 10 seconds left in counting. Betts rolling to his right and slips and falls right at the 30-yard line. May have picked up a yard. 53 seconds left in the half. And see, we've got Woodson coming in at quarterback. Clean white jersey on the freshman. Um, number 11, 5'8", 182-pound freshman, Kaysen Woodson. Got to be 33 seconds on the clock and counting. Second down and nine. And here comes the blitz. Springfield picks it up. And almost intercepted. Looking for Cobbins. And we got a penalty in the backfield. Holding against Springfield. So that'll stop the clock with 22.6 seconds left in the half. But that was there if he could have got that over his head. Yes, he was open. (laughs) 
Okay, what are they doing now, T? They moved it back. They've got holding against Springfield. And the penalty is declined. Going to bring up third down and nine. Kind of an odd decision there. So it's third and nine from the 30-yard line of Hunter's Lane. And we're in the forklift system red zone now. Clock moving with 20 seconds left. And we've got an official timeout. I think we had play clock problem. And right before I have, these the kids are gathering below us again, Coach. Yes, they are. And taking my Wi-Fi. <laughs> they got enough phones down there to take a lot of Wi-Fi. It's killing it. It's killing our servers right now. We apologize for any skipping. But that's technology, Coach. We can't do nothing about that. Yeah. Too many cell phones in one area. Third down. Going to hand the ball off. And it's going to be down inside the 30 well let's say the 24 yard line 14 seconds left in the half fourth down and four and for the jacket what you got here coach you got to go for it huh a little bit too, have to. you think a little too far out of singing there's a well, he range had, he had trouble a while ago with his plant foot while he's trying to kick the extra point yep. score six nothing in favor of the yellow jackets 14 seconds left in the half. And T, who called timeout that time? I didn't. I think it's the Jackets. We used our last one. So Springfield talking it over. And we would usually have you some scores right now, but hey, it's Thursday night. Ain't nobody playing. <laughs> you got very few teams playing tonight. I know East Robertson plays tonight. Got a big game coming up tomorrow night. Beach and Henry County. And I think I will be in attendance for that one, Coach. And it's at Beach, right? Yes, sir. That should Island. be a slugfest. Yes, sir. But you know how it happens when Beach plays at home with the officials. I ain't going to get into that, Coach. You're going to get the <laughs> people fired up. Yeah. <laughs> Put Cobbins in motion. And we got a penalty flag thrown again. And we got illegal procedure against Springfield. I will say this about that Beach and Henry County game tomorrow. Beach hasn't seen an athlete like Henry County's quarterback. No, they haven't. That young man will play football in college somewhere. Yes, sir. So now it's fourth down at about nine. 14 seconds left in the half. Put Cobbins in motion again. Betts looking to throw, going, looking for the other Cobbins and is thrown down for a loss. That's going to be the half, Coach. No more timeouts for the Jackets. Yes, it is. It's going to run out, and it's halftime with a score. Springfield 6, I mean, Hunter's Lane 0.
And we're back here at Hunter's Lane where Springfield is clinging to a six to nothing lead at halftime. And T, not a particularly pretty game at all. No, that not ideally how you want to be in this ball game for the Jackets. Uh, sloppy, sloppy, sloppy first half, offensively and defensively. Uh, just luckily, uh, Hunter's Lane was a little more sloppy than you was, Coach. <laughs> yes. And we got the ball and finally got something. And uh, the freshman, Cameron Cobbins, from about 25 out, uh, put the Jackets on the board, 6 nothing. And uh, now you start the second half, Jackets get the ball first. They started getting some going there late in that, in that uh, first half offensively. Uh, so I think you need to come back out in the second half and uh, build off what you had started before you went to the locker room. T, I wouldn't mind seeing them come out and run that wildcat again. That we haven't seen it all night, Coach. I don't know if they don't want to put it on film, you know, yeah. for the next two weeks. But it's a thing, and it's, it's effective when it, when it Yes, it, it is. It gives them a whole new dimension. Hunter's Lane getting ready to kick it away. Don't think you'll see him kicking it to Cobbins. I would hope not. Well, I hope so. But for, yeah. them, for his sake, I would hope not. It's their first kickoff of the night, Coach. And they're going to kick it away. So look at who. Going to be fielded by Cobbins. Going to take it up the middle. Going to be hit and stopped about the 30-yard line. So Springfield going to take it over at their own 30-yard line. And see, hopefully we can establish something right off the bat yes, sir. offensively. And it's all going to start with the offensive line. In that first half, offensive line coach did not come to play. No, they didn't. We have to reestablish the line of scrimmage right now. So Springfield with the football at their own 30-yard line, first and 10 to begin the second half. Taking their time, getting the play in. He had the freshman, Wilson, beside Parker Betts in the shotgun. Going to put Cobbins in motion across the set. Got a hand to Wilson. Wilson hit right at the line of scrimmage. Didn't even have a chance to get going that time. And he still fell fourth by two, Coach. Yes, he did. <laughs> He's going to be something special, too. Yeah, he is. The freshman, Cameron Wilson, uh, Coming in at 5'11", 152 pounds, Coach. And you know that they're going to get him in the weight room and put some more on him. Coach Butcher was talking about him this summer. He was a T that we got one here. We got something. And when he do put that weight on that Butcher's going to put on him, it's going to be hard to handle, Coach. Yes, he is. Second down at about nine for Springfield. Going to hand to Wilson again. Breaks one tackle, can't break the second. Going to take it out about the 35-yard line. Maybe a little short of the 35. They're going to spot it about the 34. It'll be third down and six from the 34-yard line. Wilson still in at tailback. There it Bet. is. A, a, a good wild catch you wanted, Coach. Betts just going to keep it. Or not Betts. Cameron Coggin, Cobbins. My fault. Cobbins kept it that time. Not much there. Going to bring up fourth down and bring Neal on to kick it away. The sophomore in once again to punt away for the Jackets, Keith O'Neill. Low line drive kick, going to be fumbled, going to be a race for the football, and it looks like Hunter's Lane, Hunter's got, Lane on it got on it. And um, number 16 for the Jackets, the junior, Jack Holt, did a great job, Coach. You don't see many people have the alertness to push the guy yes. that's going for the ball. Just push him off the ball, and even though you're not going to get it, hopefully somebody Just behind don't let you him get, get it. it. Exactly. So Hunter's Lane going to take it over at about their 30 or 26 yard line, 24 yard line, my fault. So they're starting deep in their own territory, 9.53 in the third quarter. Springfield ahead six to nothing. (laughs) 
Quarterback takes the snap, looking to throw, going to be under pressure, throws the screen. And T, they threw the screen to the other quarterback, number eight. Everybody gets a chance to throw that ball, Coach. Yeah. It looks like number one is the throwing quarterback and number eight is the running quarterback. And number 88 gets in and runs the running quarterback yeah. too. Number one still in the game at quarterback. Number eight in the slot. Going to be second down and 10. Quarterback looking to throw. Tucks it and runs. Hit there first by number 66 and cleaned up by number 55 and number 40 for Springfield. Number 55 ended up being on a sack for the Jackets. The senior, Max Baldwin. So it's going to bring up third down and about nine. Defensive line beginning to flex some muscle here. And now they've brought back in the running quarterback. Better hurry and get this one off. He's got seven seconds on the play clock. Got to run the jet sweep. Not able to get outside. Is that not Cobbins, Little Cobbins? That's number 28 that time. The junior, Jabralyn Ellis. He played it pretty well. Ran him out of bounds for no gain. Going to be fourth down and about nine. Love to see Cobbins get a re- good return here. Yes, sir. He's, he'll be returning this one on his side of the field. So, Jackson get this ball back in great, great field position. Some low snap and a short, high, wobbly kick. Cobbins going to have to get away from it. And it's going to roll down to about the 46-yard line of Springfield where they'll take it over in great field position. 8.06 in the third quarter. And Springfield ahead 6-0. And it's the time if you're the Jackets, you have to get going, Coach. And they're going back to that uh, Wildcat formation with Cobbins as the Wildcat, Hurst to his left. Cobbins gonna ride Hurst, cut it up the middle, got a lot of running room, cuts it back outside. Still on his feet, down inside the 30 to about the 29 for a Holman Jewelers first down. Great run that time by Cobbins. Using his blockers very well. Great run up by Cameron, Co- I mean, uh, Clarence Cobbins. He was looking for more, Coach, even. Yes, he was. At the end. So it's going to be a Holman Jewelers first down. And you might as well say a forklift system red zone. It's at the 30. So first and 10, Yellow Jackets still in the Wildcat. Cobbins got some blockers out in front. And he takes it for another first down. Holman Jewelers first down, down to about the 20 yard line. And he, Yellow Jacket's got something cooking here yes, with that sir. Wildcat. I think they're gonna go back to Betts at quarterback now. Got Cobbins in the slot. First and 10 from the 20. Reynolds slipping out of the backfield. And T, they're going back to that Wildcat, looks like. Yes, sir. Bringing in some bigger linemen up front. Got to be first and goal from about the, well, we'll say the eight-yard line. Cobbins takes the high snap, follows his guard, and 
Going to be dropped after a gain of about three down to about the four-yard line. Going to be second and goal from the four. Running back again, Coach. Back on the ball. Do the same right thing. Right back to it. Now they're bringing changes in back with Betts at quarterback. Here comes the rain again, Coach. It's starting up again. 527 in the third quarter. Springfield ahead by six. Knocking on the door again. Second and goal from the four. Hurst in the backfield behind Betts. And we got a penalty flag thrown in. And we got a delay of game on Springfield. So that's going to back them up to about the nine-yard line. Yeah, when it was running, a lot of people on, a lot of people off. It was in the back of my mind. Coach. Yes, it was. Had to make some wholesale changes. So it's going to be second and goal from the nine. Bet's going to hand to Hurst, and he's going to be tripped up and brought down right at the 10-yard line. So it's going to be third down and goal from the 10. And, T, we're not thinking about field goals here. No, sir. They're going to give him the nine-yard line, so third and nine. Reynolds is the up back, Hurst in the backfield. And Hunter's Lane blitzed and caught Hurst in the blitz and threw him for a loss. So it's going to bring up fourth and goal now from about the 13 yard line. 402 in the third quarter in counting. T big play here. Yeah, it is, Coach. Got to poke it into the end zone. Be a good time to take advantage of the mismatch and run a fade. I'll put Clarence Cobbins over and just throw it up, Coach. Yes, let him go up and get it. He's a good six, seven inches taller than that guy. They're looking at the end zone, in and out of the receiver's hands in the end zone. So the ball goes over on downs. Ball just out of the reach of number 16 for Springfield. Ten to receive it at time. Number 16, the junior. Well, the sophomore, Jack Holt. So Hunter's Lane takes it over at their own, we'll say 13 yard line. Number eight in the backfield for Hunter's Lane. Gonna just tuck it and run it up the middle. Not much there, met there by Duru Smith. Duru Smith. And number 51. And number 51 for the Jackets, Junior Joshua Lee. So he picks up maybe, well, they're going to give him about three. So it's going to be second down and seven from the 16-yard line. Quarterback going to tuck it and run it again. Not much there. Whole yellow jacket line in on the tackle. Gets it out to about, we'll say the 18, where it's going to be second down at about five. Big play for the defense here. If we can get them to kick it away, we'll have good field position once again. Got the passing quarterback in the game. Quarterback under pressure. Going to be hit and brought down for no gain there. 
number 51 and 61 on the tackle. Going to bring up fourth down and long for Hunter's Lane. And T, do you take a chance and go after this kick? You have to, Coach. Because they have snapped it low. Low and slow. Yes, they have. You have to go get this. A good opportunity for the Yellow Jackets. And here they come. He gets it away, going to bounce. Cobbins having to get away from it. And it's going to take a Hunter's Lane bounce back to about the 46-yard line. And the way your offense has been sputtering, Cobbins got to pick that one up and go with it, baby. Got to give it a shot. So Springfield going to take it over about the 46-yard line. One minute and nine seconds left in the third quarter. And see, this quarter has flown by. Every one of them has, Coach. Springfield will trip receivers to the bottom of the screen. Put Cobbins in motion across the set. Betts takes off, takes it fairly close to his first down. We'll see where they mark it. And he has a Holman Jewelers first down. Nice run that time, Taylor. I'm, I want to call him Taylor Parker. <laughs> Parker Betts. Forty-six seconds and counting. Springfield in no hurry. That sets them down. Gonna hand it to Hurst up the middle. Hurst gonna pick up about five yards. Helmet comes off of one of the Hunters Lane defenders. He's got to come out of the game. Be second down and five. Springfield going to be satisfied to just let the quarter end here with a score. Springfield six, Hunters Lane nothing. Back here with Social Dweeb Sports to start the fourth quarter. Springfield with the football driving. Be second down and four. Bet's going to roll to his right. Nobody going to come up and take the quarterback, and he gets it close to the first down. We'll see where they put it down. Looks like he's going to be just a little short, less than a yard. Big third down here. Third and about a foot. You would usually say, hey, surefire just let Parker run it down here, but what is O-line a struggle tonight, Coach? Yes. This is a big third down. And T, is, is Dowling hurt tonight? I heard a story about that, Coach. I, th- I think he has some equipment malfunction. Okay. Betts takes it up for a first down, a Holman Jewelers first down. 
down to the 30 yard line. Going to be in the red zone, forklift systems red zone. Springfield needs to put this one in and go a long way toward putting this game away. Yes, sir. You get a score here, if you the Jackets, they're going to start throwing your interceptions. Yes. They're going to they're gonna try to go and start throwing the ball a little bit more. And they're going to hand it to Philippe up the middle. Philippe making big yardage up the middle down to about the 18 yard line or 21 yard line. Philippe very capable of running the football. Yes, sir. Very quick back, coach. Sort of gives them a change up. Springfield back to the line. Matt's going to hand to Philippe again. This time going to be hit about the line of scrimmage. May have picked up a little. Ball going to be spotted at the 20-yard line, and he's able to pick up his first down. Another Holman Jewelers first down. Ten minutes exactly left in the football game. Springfield ahead six to nothing. Philippe in the backfield to the right of Betts. Got a hand to him again. This time hit in the backfield. Going to be dropped for about a five-yard loss. Or more than that, about six or seven. That time they just opened the floodgates and let Hunters Lane in. Yes, they did. Now it's going to be second down. And about 15. Betts puts Cobbins in motion. Gonna hand to Cobbins on a jet sweep. Cuts it upfield, not much there. And see, that was an awfully dangerous handoff. Yeah, it was a little. A lot of space in between he and Betts. Yes, it was. So it's gonna bring up third down. And you might as well say 10. It's going to be third down at about nine and a half. Betts looking to throw. Going to throw it up toward the end zone over the outstretched hands of Cobbins. Going to bring up fourth down. One of those in betweens, he was. And I two. think he missed. He missed the guy, coach. Yes, he did. Number six, Timothy Bush was wide open in the middle of the end zone. Looks like he was locked in on that wheel route and wanted to be there. Yep. But both defenders was on that wheel, including that safety, was left in the middle of the field, wide open. Yep. And he just threw it over the hands of Cobbins. And Springfield going to take a timeout here. Going to be fourth and nine. 8.27 left in this ball game, Coach. This game has flew by. Yes, it has. See if I can get you a few scores. <laughs> Ain't nothing but a few tonight, Coach. <laughs> yeah. Third quarter, Trisdale County zero, East Robinson 21. Third quarter, Macon County, 28. Livingston Academy, zero. East Nashville and Cane Ridge, no score reported. Maplewood and Stratford, no score reported. Ravenwood and Franklin, no uh, score reported. Second quarter, Page, 14. Hillsboro, seven. Second quarter, Summit, 16. John Overton, zero. Halftime, Rossview, 16. McGavick, zero. We're back here for a big fourth and nine for Springfield from the 19-yard line. Betts looking to throw. Going to throw it up over the middle and overthrows everybody. So the ball will go over to Hunter's Lane. 821 left in the game. And it was it was holding right there on Cobbins, but they couldn't even call it because the ball was uncatchable. Coach. Yeah. Yeah, it was thrown out the back of the end zone. 
Still a one possession game. Springfield ahead six to nothing. Hunters Lane. Spreading Springfield's defense out all over the field. Let's see, they got the fast kid back in the backfield now, number 88. Quarterback takes the snap, hands off to the tailback. Tailback slips and then is swarmed under by the Springfield defense, and he will have lost yardage. And T, that young man has already taken it to the house once yeah, and got a call back. We got to keep him bottled up here, Coach. Sure do. Going to be second down at about nine. I mean, eleven. Hunters Lane taking their time, Coach. They sure are. 7.37 left in the game. Quarterback going to keep it, run it up the middle. And he's going to take it out to about the 25-yard line. Going to be third down and about, well, we'll say six. Clock continuing to run, 7-12 and counting. And the play clock didn't catch him last time. Might not catch him this time, but it's, they're snapping the ball under 10 seconds every they time on sure this play are. clock. They're taking their time. Quarterback under pressure, rolls out to the right, sets his feet, throws deep, and broken up there by number 82 for Springfield. Number 82 for the Jackets, the junior. Cameron Cobbins, great play there by Cameron. Quarterback just kind of throws that one up for grabs. Going to be fourth down and five from the 24-yard line of Hunter's Lane. Hunter's Lane content with punting away and playing defense again, Coach. I tell you, they, they came very close to blocking that last punt. One of those big guys in the middle, it was a low-line drive kick. So he can't just sit there and, and try to kick it away from Cobbins. He's got to get rid of it. High snap, no rush, and he's going to kick it to Cobbins. Cobbins makes the first man. Well, he made him miss, but he come back and grabbed him, throws him down. And he is at about the 48-yard line of Hunter's Lane. Six thirty-seven left in the game. Springfield up six to nothing. <laughs> Springfield in no hurry now. I tell you, is that Hurst in the game at tailback? Yes, sir, it is. And Cobbins the quarterback. Wildcat look. Cobbins making people miss, and he's on the way to the end zone. And I'll see you later. Nobody going to catch him. Cobbins for the touchdown out of the Wildcat. And it broke wide open up the middle. So now Springfield ahead 12 to nothing. 6.24 left in the game. Sanginer is on to kick the extra point. Or is he? Jack is going for two right here. They're going to go for two. Hurst in the backfield alongside Betts. Reynolds up back. Betts just going to run it in himself. And he gets the two point conversion. So now Springfield up 14 to nothing. A two score lead with 624 left in the game.
back here to where Springfield has kicked it away to Hunter's Lane, and they fall on the football about the 38-yard line. And T, they're going to have to start throwing the football now with six minutes, 23 seconds left, and down two scores. Exactly what you want if you're the Jackets. Pin your ears back up front on the back end. Be disciplined. Don't let them get behind you, and you might get you a pick here. We've been really close a couple of times, and we've already picked off, what, two? Yep, Hayden Reynolds and uh, Clarence Cobbins both have interceptions. So it'll be first and 10 Warriors from about their own 38-yard line. Springfield coming on a blitz. Hit about the time that he throws and almost intercepted by Bush. Great coverage there by Springfield. Had two men in the vicinity. And, Co- and uh, Cameron Collins almost had a chance for interception there, Coach. Off the deflection. 6-14 left in the game. Springfield up 14-0. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Quarterback in the backfield by himself. Quarterback dropping, looking to throw. Going to step up in the pocket and take off. And he's going to be brought down there by number 51 for Springfield. Number 51, the junior, Josh Lee. Gained about four yards on the carry. Going to be third down and about six. Clock rolling down inside six minutes. T. Hunter's Lane, not in any hurry at all. No, sir. Haven't been for a while, Coach. (laughs) No. Brought in a different quarterback this time on third down. And he's just going to tuck it and run it. Cuts it outside. And taken out of bounds. And he's going to be close to his first down, but I don't think he got it. Uh, He did get it, Coach. Yep. They're going to give it to him. So it's going to be first and 10, Hunter's Lane from the, well, you might as well say the 50-yard line. The nose of the ball is touching the 50-yard line. Quarterback going to tuck it and run it again. Got to be met there by Reynolds and number 28 for Springfield. Number 28, Jabraylon Ellis. Great play by those guys coming up from their linebacker spots making that play. Nice to see Jabraylon without that big club on his hand this week. Going to be second down and about seven. 456 left in the game. Springfield up 14-0. Put a man in motion across the set. Gonna run the reverse. He got to the outside. Gonna be chased down out there. Just short of his first down. They're going to be about a yard short. Going to be third down and one. See, I wouldn't be surprised if this quarterback just takes it and goes straight ahead. Yes, sir. He's going to hand it to the tail. Lots He's of room, gone. and he is going to the house. The middle just opened up, and he takes it for the touchdown. 4-17 in the ball game. Now it's a 14-6 game. 
extra point coming up. Got a left footed kicker, T. Hunter's Lane's back in his ball game, coach. Yes, they are. Kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 4.17 left in the football game, it's down to a one-score game. Springfield 14, Hunter's Lane 7. Back here where Hunter's Lane has scored to cut it to a one-score game, and they're going to kick it along the ground, and it's going to be covered there by Philippe at about the 16, 17-yard line, and that's where Springfield will take it over. And T, we just need to grind this out. Yes, sir, four minutes and 15 seconds left. Peter Jackets, you shouldn't be in no hurry calling plays, and everything should be a run until it gets so obvious must pass situation. Got Hurst in the backfield. Alongside Betts. Put Cobbins in motion. Betts gonna keep it. Betts still on his feet running all the way past the 50 yard line down to about we'll say the what, the 43, 44? They're right at the 46-yard line. So Betts made a good read on that. 348 left in the game. Hunter's Lane with two timeouts left. to the ball. Got a hand to Cobbins on the jet sweep. Reverses field. Cuts it down and gets it inside the 40. Nice run that time, Cobbins. It'll be second down and about a long three. Clock down to 254. Bat's gonna keep it himself. And he's gonna be awfully close to a first down. We forgot Southside Drugs touchdown twice. So we got the first one. Yeah. May have missed that second one. Good people down there at Southside Drugs, staple in the Springfield community. And if you want some Springfield gear, that's the place to go. Yes, sir. They have the Yellow Jackets gear on deck down there at Southside Drugs. Stop in and they got all kind of stuff. They hats, T-shirts, hoodies. With the cold weather coming up, you may want to pick up a sweatshirt. Yes, sir. It's coming. It's coming in fast. And as always, we'd like to thank our great sponsors because without them, this wouldn't be possible. 
Southside Drugs, Freebird Bail Bonds, Omni Garage Door, Forklift Systems, Holman Jewelers, Baldwin's Barbecue, Jody Reynolds with Legacy Signature, Sunshine Cleaning Company, Crowder Funeral Home, Allen Holman with Century 21, Rawls Paving, Wilkins Building Group, Vision Concepts, Westside Wheels and Tires, Jeff Wright with Remax, Dunbar Lawn Care, Bulldog Renovations, and the good people at BS Brew Works. Would be a good night to have been at Brew Works. Yes, sir, it would. Stay out of this rain. Rainy night, get some cold beer coats down there. Yeah, got it. Got good Betts, food, too. Yes, Betts takes it ahead for Holman Jewelers first down. Down to about the 29-yard line. Hunter's Lane sitting on two timeouts. Don't look like they're going to use them. 225 left in the game. Score 14-7 Springfield. Don't know why you wouldn't use them because you can't take them with you. No, sir. They're going to use for you at home. That's right. Clock going to roll down inside two minutes. Hands off to Hurst. Hurst takes it down inside the 25 to about the 23. And now Hunter's Lane going to use a timeout. So, T, what do you take away from a game like this going into fall break? You won. <laughs> <laughs> you won. Uh, this win tonight solidifies you a playoff spot, uh, the fourth spot right now. And uh, so you're locked in. This is what you came here for tonight. The Jackets would have lost this game tonight. Wouldn't be no playoffs, Coach. Yes. So this this is, you know, trying to extend that streak of playoff football. And like Coach Wilson said last night on his locker room talk, once he gets his team in the playoffs, he feels like, possibilities are endless one game at a time that's their mindset right. completely new season yes sir and all they're trying to do is get in the tournament through the ups and downs of the season they're just trying to get into the tournament and with this win tonight they solidified that uh, congratulations to these young men they should be proud of themselves sloppy game but you probably don't come out here with a win and, and be locked in for the 5a uh playoffs it's good when you can play sloppy and still come out with the win yeah it is Going to be third, I mean, second down and about four for the Yellow Jackets. Ball snapped over his head, and Springfield lucky to get back on top of the football. Lucky one there, Coach. He's very lucky. Clock stopped at a minute, 34 seconds. Shouldn't they? They're going to start the clock now. Hunter's Lane still with a timeout. Going to be third down and about 14 yards to go for Springfield. I think you'll see them take a timeout after this play. And as, as the Hunter Lane kids, you know, pack up over here, get ready to leave. Goes the Wi-Fi again, Coach. Yeah. Getting out of here. Yep. But the Jacks going to get out of this one uh, with a win tonight. You know, I, actually, I'm not going to speak no more. I'm going to knock on some wood because that last <laughs> better. By week games, which are going to feel like playoff games. Yes. Regardless of your your record, you're going to be home against Gallatin and home against Beach. Uh, they're going to bring it, Coach. Well, you're going to be playing two playoff teams. Yes, sir. And Gallatin, a longstanding rival of Springfield. So you'll have two weeks to get ready for the green wave coming into the nest. Yes, sir. Springfield faithful. I like to see them pack it out and. We'll welcome the Green Wave to the nest. Uh, big rivalry since since the early 80s, Coach. Springfield Gallatin. So it's going to be third down and 14 with a minute 17 left in the game. And if I'm not mistaken, T, is Hunter's Lane has used their last timeout, hasn't it? Who they have one more left? Betts hands to Cobbin. Cobbin's going to be tripped up. So it's going to bring up fourth down and long fourth and about 13 from the 33-yard line. Clock down to 56 seconds and counting. T, I'd almost be willing to take take the penalty. Yes, sir. And, and then kick it. the football. Yes, sir. 
I think this was on the jacket's mind. Clock all the way down to 39 seconds. 10 seconds on the play clock. And that's what they're going to do. Springfield takes a timeout. 26 seconds left in the game. Fourth and 13 from the 33. One more run of the scores for you of the teams playing tonight. And as I said, Coach, you catch me tomorrow night, most likely at New Shackle Island Stadium to see the Henry County Patriots visit the Beach Buccaneers, which will be the region 7-5A champion. Hit, Coach. You better dress warm, T. <laughs> as long as it don't rain, I'm fine, Coach. There you go. Fourth quarter, Trousdale County 0, East Robinson 28. East Robinson will move to 7-1 on the season. East Robinson must have turned it on in the second half. Yes, sir. Third quarter, Macon County 28, Livingston Academy 0. Macon County moves to 7-1 on the season. Third quarter, Ravenwood 34, Franklin 14. Ravenwood will move to 7-1 on the season. Fourth quarter, Summit 37, John Overton 0. Springfield going to go for it here. Betts going to run it himself, and he takes it down to about the 15-yard line. Ball going to go over on downs, but it only leaves Hunter's Lane 21 seconds to take it 85 yards. If you got a prevent defense, this is time to pull it out right here, Coach. Yes, it is. And that's exactly what the Jackets will do. Looks like they're going four deep. And all four of those can run. Yes, sir. Well, no, they're playing at base. Just playing a little bit deeper at the corner spots. Quarterback takes the snap. Under pressure. Rolls out of the pocket. Still under pressure. Reverses field. And he's eating up the clock. Going to throw it up for grabs. Going to be intercepted by Bush. And that's going to end the football game. Four seconds left on the clock. Boom. Door shut, coach. Interception number six, the junior, Timothy Bush. On the quarterback still on the field. Somebody laid him out. For the free bird, Bell Bonds. Turnover, coach. And that will seal it for the Jackets. Here in Hunters Lane tonight. So Springfield going to get out of here with a 14-7 win. Young man not moving around a whole lot out there, T. About the time he threw the football, he got nailed. He did. So, T, next week, do you go back to basics as far as that week, or do you start preparing for Gallatin right away? It's tough preparing for Gallatin right away, Coach. No reason not to. You know, maybe look at, you know, your film. I know from experience being with Coach Wilson, but it's a long time ago. But I know that still, you know, he does try to get him a little relaxed and, you know, do a little fun things, you know, involved around football, but still playing football. Yes. And getting a little rest, you know, getting some guys healthy. And the Jack is going to got two big, 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 big matchups in the nest back-to-back weeks. Uh, against Gallatin and Beach, as we said. And, uh, you know, this team, you ain't, after this one right here, you got to, you know, celebrate it, go home, relax for a week, but you got to look straight ahead uh, at Gallatin. And got a big weekend of college football coming up. Yes, sir. Who does TSU catch this week? I believe they are at um, Kennesaw State. Very winnable game, T. Yes, sir. Wish Fat Cat and his buddies a lot of luck. Tennessee on a bye week. Yeah. Uh, Vanderbilt plays at Florida. Uh Uh-oh, Coach. Yeah. Going down to the swamp. Yep. Hard place to win. Especially since you beat them last year. Yes, sir. Hard place to win. They're going to remember that one. The Jacket Faithful starting to pile out of here, Coach. It's been a great night with you. 
Glad that rain got away from us. Yes. Field got a little sloppy here at the end, but held up fairly well. Yeah, it did. And we'll be off next week, as we've said, as the Jackets take a bye week. Uh, no locker room talk. No broadcast next Friday. Uh, we'll be off enjoying ourselves, Coach, on a bye week. And, uh, Until you got a little surprise for everybody. The videos. Oh, yeah. You can't tell them that, Coach. I ain't going to tell them about that yet. Yeah. Be on the lookout like we always did last year, you know, putting games on YouTube. Some of these uh, old guys will be surprised. Yeah, we'll put a, a couple of uh, Springfield Middle School games here on there real soon. Uh, and I know how everybody loved their middle school days. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of success there at Springfield Middle School, which and I'll have them games out here soon, and uh, you can enjoy and watch it. And look at that, Coach, the rain starting back again. <laughs> I don't care it can rain from now to Sunday <laughs> as long as I get in my truck. Yes, sir. So Springfield gets out of Hunter's Lane with a seven-point victory tonight, 14-7. to seven. And, T, hope you have a good, long rest. Yes, sir. And hope everybody makes it back to Springfield safely. And we wish everybody a good weekend. And as always, T, Go Jackets.